A teen goes missing in Silver Lake on a crowded beach day. We are live from Portage as the search for him continues. And justices with the United States Supreme Court rule against Wisconsin Democrats in a redistricting case. News 3 at Noon starts now. This is News 3 at Noon. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Hain. The search continues this afternoon for a teenager who went missing while swimming in Silver Lake last night. News 3's Madeline O'Neill joins us live from Portage now with the latest. Madeline. Mark, this is Silver Lake, where Columbia County and Sauk County dive rescue boats have been switching off for a couple hours using divers and sonar to search. Now, if you take a look over here, this is the beach where the teen went missing while swimming with family last night. And officials tell me he was outside this buoyed area sectioned off for swimming when he went missing from his inner tube. The search began at about 6, and officials tell us they were hopeful in that first hour, but this search and rescue mission has officially become a search and recovery. We're hearing from authorities that the lake is muddy and murky, making things harder for divers. The threat of severe weather also stopped search efforts late last night, and officials tell us the possibility of severe weather today may impact things. They can't continue searching if there is lightning in the area. Otherwise, Mark, they'll be out here searching. All right, Madeline and live in Portage. We'll have updates throughout the afternoon on channel3000.com. Thank mm -hmm. you. Turning to the weather now, it's another hot one. Meteorologist Chris Reese is over in the Weather Center and maybe some rain on the way. It is very hot, Mark. We have seen those clouds continuing to build pretty much all morning long. Here's a live look outside right now. Peaks of sunshine filtering through this cloud cover has allowed us to actually trend warmer throughout the day. 85 degrees right now, and we'll continue to watch those temperatures tick up just a couple more degrees into the afternoon. The showers and thunderstorms that were around earlier this morning have now pushed off to the east, but in wake of that, you have the heat and humidity, the portions of the atmosphere that did not receive thunderstorms. You get additional showers and storms that begin to develop. This is the beginning stages of that cold front that's going to be pushing through here over the next couple of hours, bringing in those rain chances. Temperatures right now in the mid 80s, upper 80s just to the south, along with low 90s being found and here's what's going to happen. Scattered showers and thunderstorms will pick up as that northerly wind takes over running into that strong southwest wind that we have out there right now. The further south these storms get, you'll notice the more intense they are. They could put down some pretty heavy rain. A northerly wind takes over overnight temperatures dropping into the 60s. Until then, we'll watch the radar for any thunderstorms that develop along with those temperatures. Make sure that you are drinking plenty of water if you're outside. Yeah, it's three days on a road now. Three days. It's it's the last day, thankfully. Thankfully. All right, we'll see you in a few minutes, Chris. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The Supreme Court is resolving bipartisan redistricting cases from Wisconsin and Maryland today without ruling on the broader issue of whether electoral maps can give an unfair advantage to a political party. The justices ruled against Wisconsin Democrats who challenged legislative districts that gave Republicans a huge edge in the state legislature. They also did not side with Maryland Republicans who objected to a single congressional district. The court sidestepped a definitive ruling in both cases. It could decide soon to take up a new case from North Carolina. A spokeswoman for the governor issued this statement today saying the decision allows the governor and legislatures to continue focusing on issues that move Wisconsin forward. Milwaukee is still pushing to host the 2020 Democratic National Convention. The city formally submitted its host bid today. Milwaukee's mayor touted the city as affordable and easily accessible. City leaders are suggesting the new Milwaukee Bucks Arena as the ideal main venue. This video shows the progress being made on the arena. The 2020 convention scheduled to be held from July 13th through the 16th. Anger is building over the Trump administration's immigration policy, which separates children from their families at the border. The administration made the decision in April to implement a zero tolerance policy, prosecuting anyone illegally entering the United States. Under President Bush, the U.S. Re referred all illegal immigrants for prosecution, but made exceptions to those traveling with children. The Obama administration used the same model, but detained families together. During a tweet this morning, the president blamed Democrats for weak border security, saying they should start thinking about people devastated by crime coming from illegal immigration. They're describing this as the choice between uh, open, open borders versus afflicting families, and that's not the choice at all. It is absolutely the law of the land to do what we have to do. There are only two things you can do in this particular situation. You can release the entire family unit, 
or you can separate them. That's it. The president will meet with congressional Republicans to talk about potential immigration bills tomorrow. Several roads and highways in northern Wisconsin are closed this afternoon. Heavy rain washed them out over the weekend. Storms caused flash flooding from Salone Springs to Drummond and Mason. That's about 45 minutes north of Hayward. Some areas reported more than 13 inches of rain. State troopers plan to target drunk drivers and underage drinkers attending a popular country music festival in the state. Country USA runs through the weekend in Oshkosh. Troopers and local police officers will be on every road in and out of the festival and say they will be writing tickets, not warnings for violations. Madison students on summer break can access free meals at a number of parks and schools across the city. The Madison School District partners with Reap Food Group over the summer to hand out meals and offer educational activities. The pro program kicks off today, hoping to feed the thousands of families that rely on free and reduced lunch throughout the school year. That program is available at Elver, Southdale, and Leopold Parks, plus at Central Hispano and several other locations all summer long. You can go to mssd.org slash food or text the word food to 877-877 to find a location near you. And speaking of food, Mr. Food is up next on News 3 at Noon. Did you know that if you ate ramen noodles three times a day for an entire year, it would only cost you $250? If you ask any college student living on a budget what they eat when money is tight, most likely the answer will be ramen noodles. As a matter of fact, did you know that if you ate ramen noodles three times a day for an entire year, it would only cost you $250? And besides them being easy on our wallets, ramen noodles are becoming very trendy. So let me show you how to beef them up. We start by adding to a bowl of beef broth some soy sauce, a bit of honey, a decent amount of rice wine vinegar, sesame oil, brown sugar, 
chopped garlic, and some cornstarch. We give this a mix and set it aside. Then we saute some broccoli and onions in sesame oil until they're tender. To that, we add some strips of top round beef and let it cook for a few minutes. Meanwhile, we boil a couple of packages of ramen noodles, discarding the seasoning packets. All that's left to do is add our seasoned broth to the skillet, let it thicken, and once it does, stir in our noodles. If you didn't know otherwise, you'd probably think this was from some fancy Asian restaurant. After all, the veggies are crisp, the beef is super tender, and the noodles are cooked to perfection. To get the recipe for what we call beef and broccoli noodle toss, all you have to do is visit our website. I'm Howard with Kelly in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a noodlicious way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. That's mm -hmm. a lot of noodles. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Howard. Still to come on News Here at Noon, Linda Barch from the Bruce Company joins us to answer your plant and garden questions. I'll let you know when to call in. Plus, you may not need to water your garden this evening. Rain is possible in southern Wisconsin. Chris Reese has our first alert forecast after the break. Feed the heat. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrial is down 161 points. The NASDAQ down 17. Let's check in now with Q106 Farm Director Pam Yonke on this warm Monday. Mm. Yeah, still sticky. And now I'm handling a lot of phone calls, a lot of stories about the flooding that impacted farm fields all across our Channel 3 viewing area, Mark. You know, like you said, some folks really got hit by a lot, a lot of rain. Other folks, not so bad. That was good news for the folks that hosted the Columbia County Moo Day Brunch on Saturday. Uh, we were up at Leeds Dairy LLC just off Highway 51, where Jeff and... Uh, uh, Lisa Emmer were the host. I think we've got a couple pictures of the family. And the reason I love being up there with those folks is this is the third generation that's been hosting the Columbia County Moo Day Brunch. Uh, it's uh, Jeff and Lisa, then it was uh, Karen and Marv Steinke, and then uh, Hart, Art and Helen Anholt. Uh, there you had uh, Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish was there. That's uh, Deputy Secretary Keith Ripp. They were helping out to serve some of the great folks that showed up. And like I said, they had to take pretty quick action. They came up with alternate parking because uh, the rain had 
made that not possible on the farm. And they also had all kinds of wood chips down, but it turned out beautifully. And again, I want to thank all the hosts at the Columbia County Mood Day Brunch. I was hoping we'd have that family picture, but like I said, it's just nice to see three generations that have been working there to make sure that that Columbia County Mood Day Brunch had a home. All right, so our markets on the midday are acting just like uh, Wall Street. We're lower. Livestock trade's not been impacted so much, but we'll see a little bit better today and tomorrow how the livestock markets react. Uh, the grain trade is what's really having a difficult time with the light now a little bit brighter that China is going to target U.S. soybeans specifically as one of their targets uh, when it comes to uh, the markets. Now, like I said, soybeans are down on the midday. Everything's down, corn, beans, wheat. So uh, a time lapse, if you will, from the time we send those markets over till the time we take a look at them. Now dairy is also feeling some of the pressure. We understand that China's got some dairy products on their short list. We just barely got into that market. Barrel cheese today is down five and a half. 40 pound black cheese is unchanged at 159 and a half. Double A butter down three today at 232 and a quarter. So like I said, Mark, until we get a little bit more clear picture on whether these tariffs are truly going to go forward. And remember, some of these don't happen until the 6th of July, I believe, but the market is still very anxious. That's why Wall Street's acting the way they are. Me, I'm just anxious to see if we are going to get more of that rain. Man, oh man, like I said, a lot of farmers that have waterlogged fields, they're going to have to monitor now for the next 48 hours or so. Yeah, that's the last thing we need, but apparently some is on the way. We'll I see you later, Pam. Right. And yep. Chris is here now with the specifics of the forecast. That's right. Now, at least this rain will cool us off. That is Some the good news. good news. And it should target the southern half of Wisconsin this time, as opposed to the northern half that we've experienced all weekend. Speaking of the weekend, highs yesterday were quite warm. I have to point out La Crosse, Wisconsin received a high of 98 degrees. There were two degrees away from 100, but change is on the way. We are tracking the cold front into town already. Temperatures 10 degrees colder just to the north. Check out Watoma right now. 10 degrees colder. La Crosse, 8 degrees colder than they were just 24 hours ago. Madison, 2 degrees colder than 24 hours ago. We'll continue to track the cold front all the way down to the south. That's responsible for the cloud cover that we're seeing on Skycam right now. The rain showers have not yet Get developed from this one. We are still pretty steamy out there. 85 degrees right now, the dew point 73. So it's still very muggy, very soupy as you step outside. 90, the temperature in Janesville right now. 88 as you work your way over towards Monroe. You factor in the humidity, it feels like 92 here in town. In Janesville, it feels like 98. Same for Watertown. 97 out towards Platteville. So we are all feeling well above the actual posted temperature into the afternoon. We'll likely feel like 98. But watch how things really begin to cool off overnight and towards tomorrow. Feeling like 64, the actual air temperature at that time will also be 64 degrees. We have a strong southwesterly wind right now. Check out just to the north. You have a northerly wind coming in with that. This boundary is the cold front that is pushing on in. So eventually we will get in on a northerly wind into the afternoon and evening. This region is also where we saw the showers and thunderstorms earlier today. They dissipated. The southern half of Wisconsin has the unstable air. You already have at least a few showers and thunderstorms starting to develop as it runs into the southern part part of the state. That's also where we do have the marginal risk for some strong to severe thunderstorms that could put in some damaging winds and a lot of water. As we wait for that trigger to arrive, we will watch rain chances that pop up overnight and through Tuesday morning. This front will sag to the south. The further south it gets, the stronger those showers and thunderstorms will be. Eventually we'll be stuck with cloud cover and temperatures in the 60s pretty much through Tuesday and parts of Wednesday as well. Speaking of how those showers and thunderstorms will intensify as they work their way to the south. Those who get under the most intense showers and thunderstorms will be at the greatest risk of seeing some truly heavy rain, potentially a couple of inches of it. With all the moisture that we have in the atmosphere, it won't take a lot to just rain out all that is there. 75, your high on Tuesday. Wednesday, 76, more sunshine into the picture. Those 70s last through Thursday and Friday. By Saturday and Sunday, we start to get more humidity. We also start to add more rain chances back into the picture. 80s return by the end of the weekend as well. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday next week, we are humid again. Temperatures are in the 80s. However, I will say this. 
the forecast is ever evolving. We'll keep a close eye mm -hmm. on that. Latest forecast model showing a system coming through that would actually keep us on the colder side of those rain chances, temperature staying in the 60s. So that would be nice. We will <laughs> see if that happens. As for now, we're going to stick with the warm forecast, but it could be changing in coming days. All right. Well, summer's here. Yes, it is. All right. Thank you, Chris. No There's problem. more to come on News 3 at noon. I'm next, Linda Barch with the Bruce Company is here to answer your plant and garden questions. 270-9933 is the number to call. We'll get to your questions right after this. Linda Burch from the Bruce Company is here taking your calls at 270-9933. We have some perennials, some annuals. A little bit of everything. I brought some daisies. There's both perennial and annual. This happens to be annual, so pay attention when you're buying them. But I also brought a, a couple of plants that just have really nice foliage that will accent your garden. Aconoclea up front here, the, this golden one. Mm -hmm. And then there's Artemisia, silver mound. So that is going to put on a show all the time. And, of course, the dahlia back here, if you deadhead that, You'll get lots of flowers still coming on that all summer long. Beautiful stuff. All right, let's get to the phone. Oh, everybody's everybody's waiting here. Let's start with Steve in Reesburg. Hi, Steve. Steve, you there? I have a river birch clump. Here we go. All right, try it again. All right, I have a river birch clump that I set out last summer. Uh, it's a big one, about eight feet tall. Okay. Did real well last summer, and this spring it leafed out kind of late. But the leaves are beautiful now, about two-thirds of the way up. The upper third of that, there are buds on it, but absolutely no leaves. Yes. Do, I cut that, do I cut that off, or do I hope maybe next year the leaves fill out? Well, we're far enough in the season that if that hasn't leafed out at this point, the secondary buds are not going to come on that those part of the branches. So prune it back. River birch, when they are transplanted, that can happen. It can lose that, that upper crown. And as long as you develop another leader on that tree, it can, it can still survive. You're going to have to prune out the dead, see how it looks after it's done, and 
It's, Good it's, luck. Give it some time. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Angie in Argyle. Hi, Angie. Hi. Happy Monday, you guys. You too. Hey, I'm wondering, um, my peonies and my... Uh, Irises are all done blooming. Can I cut those down to the ground and still have them come back next year? Okay, I don't typically prune peonies down until late fall, but I do cut off the, the spent flowers. And as far as the iris, the iris, if they are they the German bearded type or Siberian iris, which kind? Oh, she's gone. She's gone, all right. Siberian iris, you just cut out the flowers. The German bearded, I would cut the foliage back to about four to six inches. Then you don't have that problem with insects as badly. Don't cut down the peonies, because the plant needs the nutrients all summer. That's right, for next year. Right, I'm learning. Let's go to Dorothy in Madison. Hi, Dorothy. Hi. Hi. So what's your question? I have a Miss Kim lilac that I put in about two years ago, and it got absolutely no blossoms at all this year. So oh. well, I was wondering if you have any tips. Did you do pruning on that plant no. in the fall, Bainish? Yes. No pruning. Okay. No, none at all. Is it out in full sunlight? Well, <sighs> It, it probably isn't really full. Okay, um, at least four hours a day? I would think so, yes. That should be enough. Just give it another year. Maybe it was just on the young side. Miss Kim are, are pretty precocious in terms of flowering. They're better than some of the French hybrids. So but They have to mature. Mm -hmm. You have to give it a little time. All right, let's go to Louise in Loganville. Hi, Louise. Hi. Hi. I have cucumber plants and melon plants. The leaves are getting spots of white mildew on? Is there mm -hmm. anything I can do for that? Well, you can check to see what's happening with all this rain that we've had. That's a fungus. So check to see what is appropriate to use on a, on a food crop. Yeah, yeah you got to be careful because you, mm -hmm. you it's not It's not ornamental, yeah. All right, we have time for Ginny in Beloit. Hi, Ginny. Hi. Hi. Hi go ahead. Um, I have a three to four foot magnolia shrub, um, very healthy, and it is, I want to transplant it to our new home up in Partyville, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and I just want to know how to go about that. Wait till next spring and dig it and move it before it leaves out. Okay. It's a it's a spring day golden plant. But what if they move before the spring? Ask the whoever <laughs> moving if they can move it next spring. <laughs> All right, we're out of time. Stay on the line, Linda. We'll talk to you off the air. Stay cool. Yeah, that's right. Chris Reese has one final check of the forecast. That's right. It is still hot and steamy out there, feeling like the low 90s right now. It'll feel like the upper 90s as we get you further into the afternoon. Eventually, more in the way of rain chances does take over our forecast. You'll see those showers and thunderstorms arriving towards dinner time overnight. Temperatures fall in to the low 60s. So some relief on the way. That's our time for now. We'll see you back here at four. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.